Hi everyone, first of all, I hope you are doing well. My name is Javier and I want to thank the PyCon and the Python Software Foundation for giving me the opportunity of sharing this, my first talk at PyCon on this new online format. I hope you will enjoy my talk and let's start with the presentation. Hello everyone, welcome to my talk. Sorry, could you repeat that again? Speech recognition in Python. I'm Javier Jorge Cano, I'm a PhD student at Universidad Politécnica de Valencia. My main focus is on automatic speech recognition, or ASR, and I'm part of the Machine Learning and Language Processing Research Group. We work on automatic transcription, translation, and voice synthesis, mainly for educational content. And here you have some videos about the projects that we have developed. What is this talk about? Well, I want to propose some questions that I'm going to answer during this talk. First, why is speech recognition relevant? What resources we need to create recognition systems? What are the components of these systems? Which are the tools to develop them in Python? How can we evaluate the performance of an ASR system? What are the advanced topics in this field? Some initial remarks. I'm going to avoid the maths and the statistics behind ASR because I want to focus on the main ideas and the basic concepts and components of these systems. That's the reason why I will ask you for some leaps of faith during this talk. But if there is something that is not clear enough, please don't hesitate to contact me anytime. Let me start providing a basic definition for automatic speech recognition or ASR. In speech recognition, we want to transform the speech signal into text. Someone could say, but this problem is not already solved. We have Siri, we have Alexa, we have the Google Assistant and some other assistants and we can interact with them directly with our voice and they work pretty well, but there are still some challenges out there. We can talk about the linguistic challenges, for example. Here we have the top 100 languages according to the number of the native speakers. The most popular ones are Chinese, Spanish and English. These and some other languages are supported by these assistants, but there are many other languages that don't have these kind of services available. I included here the 10 million speaker threshold to provide an idea of the number of people that don't have this kind of tools in their own languages. It's important to remark that language involves communication, diversity, culture, and heritage, and providing high-level ASR tools could have a direct impact on all these aspects. There's a lot of work to do in terms of dialects, accents, and resources that we have available for these languages. On the other hand, we have the technical challenges. In our case, in our group, we are focused on educational content. And in this context, we face complex vocabulary, different hardware conditions, multiple speakers, multiple languages. So there are still some open problems. I want to remark also that speech is one part of a bigger picture. For example, considering other speech tasks, we can talk about speech translation or automatic subtitling or dubbing. In this context, speech plays an important role. So providing better ASR systems could improve the performance on these other tasks. So there's a long way to go. Now that we have talked about the interest and the future of this field, let me show you the steps that I'm going to follow during this talk to create an ASR system. Starting from the resources that we are using in the modeling part to prepare and to train the models that we are going to use during the recognition. And then finally, performing the evaluation of the system. During this talk, I'm going to show some examples. And in these examples, I'm going to use our own toolkit, the Translectures UPV toolkit and the Python extension PyTLK. This was developed at the Machine Learning and Language Processing Research Group. It covers all the ASR pipeline from the feature extraction to the recognition and evaluation, and it uses state-of-the-art models, for example, LSTMs and transformer models. And for this, it has interfaces to communicate with deep learning toolkits such as TensorFlow or PyTorch. You can follow the steps that I'm going to show here with a different toolkit, for example, with Kali or PyKali, because the steps that I'm going to follow are pretty standard. Let's talk now about the resources, where we can get them and how we can prepare them to use them during the modeling part. The resources that we need are the audio files, the speech signal, the transcription, the text, and the lexicon. 
this lexicon will provide the phonetic transcription for the words that we are considering. Now I'm going to show some open resources that you can find on the internet, starting from the speech commands dataset from Google. This is a very good dataset to start playing with ASR because it contains short utterances with isolated words. This problem is easier than recognizing the whole sentence. If you want something more advanced, you can check the Open Speech and Linguistic Resources website that contains mainly data sets that are used in academia. For example, Libre Speech and Tedium. If you want to explore more languages, you can check the Common Voice project from Mozilla. This provides up to 40 different languages. Now that we have talked about where we can find some resources, let me show you the steps to prepare them to be used during the modeling part. You want to download them, of course, and then perform some quality control, checking the audio quality and the text format. And finally, you want to adapt this uh, data set to a format that your toolkit can understand. So you should perform some conversion or transformation of the original data. Let me show you some tools that you can use to perform this data preparation step. For example, to convert the audio, you can use SOX on PySOX. To perform the text normalization, you can use directly Python. Or if you want to do more sophisticated things, you can use NLTK. And you can use also NLTK if you want to get additional linguistic resources. For example, the lexicon if it was not provided in the original dataset. If you want to know more about some other tools that you can use, you can check this reference. Now that we have the resources that we need, the speech signal, the transcription, the text, and the lexicon, let's focus on the audio files, on the speech signal. Usually this data comes in raw format, that is the waveform. This kind of data is not very informative, and the models that we are going to use during the modeling part have some problems understanding this data. So we need to perform some transformation in order to obtain a more meaningful representation. Let me show you one example. Here we have six utterances for isolated words. We don't know which word was pronounced on each one, and we cannot say if they are similar or different. So we need to do something to extract more information from these samples. And we can perform a feature extraction process in order to change the representation. For example, we can transform from the time domain to the frequency domain, and then we obtain this other representation. Here we can observe some patterns that can help us to understand the data better. That's the reason why we want to perform a feature extraction process to convert from the original data to another representation that we can use during the modeling part. This feature extraction step involves some steps that transforms the data from the raw representation to the final representation that we are going to use later. In this case, the output of this step are the MFCC features that are a set of vectors extracted from the original audio. We have here a reference to, to learn more about these different steps that are performed during the feature extraction. These vectors are usually known as the acoustic vectors or frames. This is an example of how you can perform the feature extraction in our toolkit in TLK with PyTLK. Here we have the extractor object and then we should provide the list of samples and the list of output files where the features will be stored. Underneath, we have an example of one of these features with uh, the header with indi that indicates the, the dimension for these vectors, 48, and the number of vectors that we extracted from this audio file, 98. And we have also some, some values for this feature. We have talked about the resources, where we can find them, where, how we can transform them. Let's move on now to the modeling part. And I want to start with the acoustic model. Again, we want to transform the speech signal into text. Before starting directly with uh, full sentences, I want to focus on isolated words. In this example, you have two utterances for the same word, the word for, 
and we have uh, the features extracted underneath and the phoneme boundaries also indicated in these samples. We can observe here some global structures, some common patterns, but we can observe also that there is some temporal variability between the phonemes if we consider the same phonemes in both cases. So we need a model that can take this temporal variability into account. Let me show you an example. We can think of our human voice production system as a finite state machine with states, transitions, and emissions. The states are the different setups that we can organize in our vocal tract. The transitions represent when we stay in the same setup or if, or if we change from one setup to another. And the emissions could be represented as the acoustic vectors, as the frames that we have extracted in the feature extraction step. Let me show you an example. For example, we can start with the first setup and then produce the first acoustic vector or frame that is related to the first phoneme, and we can move to the second setup and then continue producing the sound that is related to the second phoneme. Here we have the acoustic vectors or the frames for this phoneme. And finally, we move to the last setup and then we produce the last part of this word. There is a model that imitates or provides this behavior. And this model is known as the hidden Markov model. In the hidden Markov model, we have states, transitions, and emissions. And for example, we have a model for one phoneme. Three states because we want to model the beginning of the phoneme, the middle of the phoneme, and the end of the phoneme, and we can stay in the same state or we can move from one state to another, performing these transitions. We have also emissions, and this represents that being in one state, we can produce some emission of one of these acoustic vectors that we have extracted in the previous step. This is the model for one phoneme, as I said, but we can concatenate them to form words, like in this example with the word for. Regarding the emission, we can model this with a probability distribution, for example, a Gaussian distribution, or even a mixture of Gaussians. But nowadays, the most popular approach is the one that is based on neural networks. And then we talk about the hybrid systems that are a combination of deep neural networks and these hidden Markov models. I'm going to show now an example of how you can perform the training of the acoustic model. Okay, the training of these hidden Markov models. You can use the trainer object that provides a method that can create an initial model, a prototype, using the phoneme list and the list of samples. And we are also indicating here that we want to add a special state for the silence. Underneath, we have the result of this step, an initial model that contains the type of model that we are using, a d-dimensional Gaussian with 48 dimensions, and this model contains 33 phonemes, that is, 33 hidden Markov models. We have here one extract for the hidden Markov model for this phoneme, and it has three states, and these are the log probability to transit from one state to another, and finally, the parameters of the Gaussian distribution that models the emission probability. With this initial model, we can perform the training. For the training, we need the lexicon, the transcriptions, and the list of samples, the list of features that we have extracted. And the, we can indicate also the verbosity and the number of iterations that we want to perform, as well as the symbol that we are using to represent the silence. With this, the training starts, and then it iterates on this model, improving, in this case, the measure that we are considering is the log likelihood that provides an idea of the fitting between the model and the data. We want this to be the highest possible. Finally, we obtain the model that we can use in the next part, in the following steps. If you want to learn more about this, you can check these videos about the algorithms that are being used in this training process, that are the Viterbi algorithm and the forward-backward algorithm.
This was the first part of the modeling step. Let's move on to the second component, that is the language model. We have seen a model, the hidden Markov model, that can help us to identify phonemes and words. But we need something to connect these words, to recognize the full sentence. And this is where we can use the language model. I want to show you an example to illustrate the idea behind the language model. Okay, we have here the sentence, the black dog and a gap, and we have uh, three options. We usually say that the correct option is barks. And we have said that because of the previous context that we have here and the model that we have about the language that tells us that the most likely word here was barks. And this is what the language model does. It provides some score or probability for the following word considering the previous context. Additionally, this language model can provide another structure that we are going to use during the recognition. I want to show uh, an example of this. Here we have three sentences and we can condense them in a graph format as follows. We have states that contain the context that we are considering, for example, two previous words. In this case, as we are starting from scratch, we have uh, nothing, nothing. And then we have arcs with words that change from one context to another. For example, with this D, we end up with nothing D. And then we have person and black, and person takes us to the state D person and black to the state D black. That is the context that we are considering in these states. Now, another iteration, and we have walks that takes us to the person walks state and house and dog that are represented in the black house and the black dog states. So we have a graph structure that contains the information of the original samples, the relation between the words in the original samples. This is another example, more complex, but I think that you get the idea that you can transform your text data set into a graph structure or representation. One of the most popular models to perform this language model in part is the engram model. You have here one example to train and evaluate an engram model. And in this case, the performance measure is the perplexity. In this case, the lower, the better. That gives an idea of the certainty of the model when it provides the score or the probability for the following word. We are using the SRI language model in Turkey and the Python bindings that are, provide, that are provided in, in this reference. Again, the state of the art in this context are the neural networks and they can be used after encoding the previous context in a vector format and then providing these vectors to the network and it can produce the scores or the probability for the following word, as in the, in the engram model that I mentioned before. We've seen the two main components of the modeling part. Let's move on to the final part of this modeling step, the recognition model. In this recognition model, what we have is the acoustic model that provides information about phonemes and words and we have the language model that works at word and sentence level. We want to combine these two models in order to obtain a graph, a final graph that we are going to use to perform the recognition. I'm going to illustrate this with the toy example that we have seen in previous slides. We have here the language model that I've shown before with the words and how they are connected forming sentences and with this graph we can decompose the words into phonemes using the lexicon and we can decompose these phonemes into the states of the hidden markov models that we have considered in the acoustic modeling part what we have is a graph that contains the hidden markov model states and we can perform the recognition directly on this graph, as I'm going to explain in a minute. 
but this is a toy example. If we consider a real world problem, we end up with a huge graph with several nodes and several arcs. These kind of models are known as weighted finite state transducers. And if you want to know more about them, uh, you can check this reference. Now let's move on to the recognition step. Here we have the graph that I mentioned in the previous slide, and we can consider the possible paths in this graph that are marked here. But there is one path that will provide the best score according to some scores that I will describe in a minute. So here we have the best path in, inside this graph, considering these scores. And with this path, we can obtain the final sentence, considering that we have the states that can be uh, transformed in the phonemes and this into the words, and then we can obtain the final sentence, in this case, the black dog. And this is what will be performed during the recognition, a search in this graph in order to find the best path. I mentioned some scores, but how are these scores computed? Well, we have the transitions that can provide one part of this score, for example, from one state to the same state or from one state to a different state, or also if we are changing from the last state of one word to the first state to another word, and this is where the language model provides its score. Or we can consider also the score that we obtain when we perform the emission. This emission score relates the state and the feature at a particular moment. Okay, so we are performing a time synchronous search. When we move from one state to another, we consume or we check the, the feature vector that we have at this time step, at this particular moment. To model this, we have seen during the acoustic modeling part that we can use, for example, Gaussian models or neural networks. Now that we know more about these scores, I'm going to show an example of how this recognition process evolves. Here we have a phoneme and we can start from the first state. And in this state, we can consider changing from this state to the second state or staying in the same state, okay? And these are the paths that are shown here with different scores. When we end this step, we can consider performing the emission probability or obtaining the emission score that relates the state and the feature that is observed at this moment and then it provides another score. And then we can repeat this process and consider the second step. And we have some other paths, and then at this new state, we should consider also the emission score. Let me show you now how this works at word level. We have here the phonemes for the word house and the states that we have in the hidden Markov models. And again, we start from the first state and then we consider the different paths and we consider also the emission scores and so on and so forth. So we have a set of paths that can cover the whole graph, okay? But we want the best path because this is the one that contains the best hypothesis. But we cannot explore the whole graph because this is not feasible. We are using a huge graph with thousand nodes. So we need to perform some pruning in order to reduce the search space. And this is carried out with the beam search algorithm that narrows the search space in order to consider just the most promising one. When we reach the final state of the word that we are considering, we should explore the first states of the words that can follow the current word according to the language model. This can be pictured with the following diagram, where we have on these squares the state for each word. And then we should follow the search step, the recognition along the states and along the words. And we consider some paths that are pruned and some others that are kept. 
Finally, we obtain what will be the sentence that is recognized, that is the best hypothesis that is shown here. We can perform this recognition process very easily in TLK. We should provide the acoustic model, the hidden Markov model that we have trained in the acoustic modeling part. We should provide the lexicon we have obtained from the, from the data set. And we should provide also the language model, the n-gram model that we have prepared in the language modeling part. We have here the recognizer that we are using. This is the most basic one that we have implemented. And this recognizer LM will combine these models to create the graph that I mentioned before. We should provide also the, the list of samples and some additional parameters that will control the beam search process. This is the result of this step. We have here some information about the process, some statistics about the beam search algorithm, and we have the recognized sentence, I noticed how wide and well shaped his own hands were. Okay, so this is the output of this recognition step. This provides also what is known as an alignment that indicates what is the alignment between the acoustic vectors between the features that we extracted and the phonemes and also the words. This is very useful, for example, if you want to perform an automatic segmentation of the audio. Let's move on to the last part of this process, the evaluation step. Here we can consider two performance measures. For the accuracy, we can consider the word error rate that is the result of computing the edit distance between the sentence that was recognized, the hypothesis, and the reference. And to perform this edit distance, we are considering the insertion, the substitutions, and the deletions. I will show you an example in a minute. Regarding the speed, we can consider the real time factor, that is the time to perform the recognition divided by the audio length. This means that an RTF of one involves that you can transcribe one hour of audio in one hour. This is the example for this word error rate computation. We have here some mistakes. For example, we have in the first part, the system provided sub and continent and the original reference was subcontinent. So this counts as two mistakes. One is one substitution and one deletion. We have also, for example, the system provided intimacy and the original reference was in Tennessee. And this counts as one substitution and one insertion that we should perform in order to obtain the original reference. Finally, we have here the word error rate that is 11.5 more or less. And this means that the system makes 11 mistakes for each 100 words that it has recognized. It depends on the task, but in general, Values around 15 or 20 are considered good enough to deploy the system to production. Now that we have covered all the SR pipeline from getting the resources to perform the final evaluation, let me talk about some advanced topics in this field. For example, we can perform a topic or a speaker adaptation to adapt our system to a particular situation. And this provides better results than using a general system. We can perform also a multi-step recognition. Why should we consider just the best hypothesis? Why not considering the 10 best or the 100 best? And then with this new hypothesis, we can perform an iterative process in order to refine the output of the system. I mentioned this very briefly during this talk, but Neural networks are the state of the art in acoustic and language model. Also very recently, there is another approach that has provided good results that are the integrated models, the sequence to sequence models. This approach tries to combine the acoustic and the language model in a unique model and then performing the training in this combined model. If you want to learn more about the last developments of this field and the systems and the techniques that have been proposed during the last five years, you can check this interesting video. 
we have covered the speech recognition's motivation and challenges, where and how we can obtain resources for ASR systems, the components of an ASR system, this acoustic model and the language model, and how they are combined to create this recognition graph. We have seen some tools in Python to develop ASR systems. We have talked about the performance measures that you can use to evaluate your ASR system, the word error rate and the real-time factor. And finally, we have talked very briefly about the incoming directions, for example, the neural network-based approaches and the integrated models. Thank you for your attention. These are my contact details and the contact details of my research group. So if you want to know more about our tools, our systems, or our research, please feel free to contact us anytime. Thank you again.